Liberace founded the Liberace Foundation for the Performing and Creative Arts in 1976. And it started really as his idea of a way to give back. He received scholarship assistance for his classical studying from a very young age. It was formed at a meeting in a little hotel restaurant in Los Angeles. And Liberace was there, and all of a sudden he said, I want to have a foundation. I want to give scholarships to needy students that want to have careers in the creative and performing arts. One of our scholars was a Nomberg winner of the piano competition, and he is very generous in coming back and supporting us and doing performances for us. This is such a tough career that if you have to worry about finances or working another part-time job or something in addition to practicing the piano, it's virtually impossible to succeed. So uh, getting the support and the financial assistance of the Liberace Scholarship just allowed me to concentrate on my music and that was the most important thing. It was no surprise to his fans and friends that Liberace would want to share his treasures with the world. On Easter Sunday, 1979, he welcomed the first guest into his museum and led the initial tour himself. Liberace, at age 65, was still up to the challenge of new ideas and new audiences. Radio City Music Hall in New York City had been after him to perform there for years. Liberace finally agreed and did an advanced publicity tour getting rave reviews for his appearance on The David Letterman Show. In 1984, The Liberace Show replaced the traditional Easter pageant and was a smashing success. The audience knew they were in for something special. From the moment he was driven on stage in his white Rolls Royce, in his white mink coat, with a 12-foot train. Liberace returned to Radio City the next year for 21 sold-out performances. I heard that the music hall was going to have him coming down a staircase, and we needed something for him to make an entrance. So I came up with the idea of a giant uh, Fabergé egg that would open up. And he would come out of it all done up in, in pink turkey feathers with a huge collar. We even did the, the music hall girls in costumes to match his uh, costume. And they all held candelabras, which made very, very effective entries. We were looking for a new finale for the show, and that's always very difficult to get a good payoff. And I came up with the idea, I think I had seen an old movie on television somewhere that, of Peter Pan, I got, and I thought, God, that would be heaven if we could do that for Lee. And I spoke to Lee about it, the, possibly doing flying. He said, oh, no, it can't be, I can't do that. I said, yes, you can. I said, let me think about it. And fortunately, uh, we were in Vegas at the time, and a very good friend of mine, Peter Foy, who owns the flying equipment, uh, lived in Vegas. So I contacted Peter and I spoke to him about possibly uh, setting up the equipment one afternoon at the Hilton Hotel where Lee was appearing and let him try this. And Debbie Reynolds was in town and, and, they, and um, Lee and Debbie shared the same manager, Seymour Heller. So Seymour called Debbie and said, can you come help teach Lee to fly? So she comes over and she watches him and she says, you've got to arch your back, arch your back. And that was the beginning of the flying and he just loved it. You've got a beautiful audience. Bless you. 
but now I must fly. In fact, after a while, he thought he was a great bird flying away. <laughs> See, I'm doing my part to conserve gas. Mary Poppins, eat your heart out. At his last Radio City engagement in 1986, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty, he dressed as a drum major as he had 10 years before in a red, white, and blue sequin costume with hot pants. <laughs> performance, Liberace entertained nearly 6,000 of his fans with as much enthusiasm for show business as he had as a young man. After the show, the crew, his staff, and even the Rockettes gathered on stage to celebrate his accomplishment. A total of 56 performances at Radio City Music Hall. No other entertainer in history even came close to that number. Obviously tired and not looking well, Liberace appeared on Oprah's show in December 1986, did a publicity tour for his new book, and went home to Palm Springs to spend Christmas with his family. He died just six weeks later, on February 4th, 1987, of complications from the AIDS virus. So I jumped in my car and I drove to Palm Springs, and they prepared me. I went into his bedroom, which was converted into a hospital room for the nurses and everything else. And the nurse said, uh, talk to him. He can hear you, but he won't be able to answer you. He's in a coma, and he was breathing heavy. So I took his hand and uh, said, said a little prayer and said goodbye. And he died that night. Never say goodbye, say ciao, till we meet again, say ciao, though the time has come for us to part, you always will remain within my heart. So if Liberace was still performing today, I think he would be bigger than ever. 
because things like charisma, showmanship, magnetism transcend the ages. Time will disappear, so hold me dear, and never say goodbye, say ciao. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when words are hard to find, to say what's on my mind, I just speak one little word in Italian. To those I must leave behind. Shed a tear, say, child, you'll be always near somehow. I have no message for the world except that I think sometimes people do not realize how truly fortunate they are just to have their health and to have the pleasure of their family and be blessed with good and loyal friends. Thank you very much. And for you, for me, thank you very much. Bless you. All thank you very much. Ciao! I am not the greatest pianist in the world. There certainly are greater virtuosos than I am. But I have been able to do with the piano something that maybe even the virtuosos haven't been able to do. I've been able to reach the people. You can be sure there will never be another entertainer like the legendary Liberace. And I can tell you, we all really miss his sense of fun and fantasy. Lee, in our hearts, we'll be seeing you.